This is the third lesson of my four lesson hip joints video series. Today we will work with the hip joints again, of course, how to integrate them in our body image. And also today will be the last time we will be lying on the floor because we will prepare the hip joints for standing. Okay, let's review very briefly what I said in the last video about the five lines of the body. We have the arms, right arm, left arm, the two lines, whatever direction I'm pointing them. And then I have two legs, right leg, left leg, and I have the spinal column in the middle. So this is five lines of the body. For the arms, of course, you can see, you can make your arms stiff or you can make your arms soft and limber. You can pull something, you can push something, you get the idea, you can do the same thing with your legs. Your legs can be hard and stiff. I can also stand on my legs, stand on the hip joints. And the same is true for the spine. The spine can be very stable, very uh, stiff, uh, support myself, support something in lifting and carrying when I pick something off the floor. The spine can be very stable, but it can also be very soft. Just to remind you of this five lines concept, and now we go onto the carpet. So make sure, make sure you have a floor space. It doesn't have to be big in this lesson. And this lesson can be rather, you can do it on a yoga mat actually, this one. You don't need a lot of space today. Just a little bit space and a little bit of time and some quiet time. And then come, please come to lie onto your back. If you need a pillow under your head, by all means, take a pillow. How do we know that we need a pillow? That's a good question. And just feel how you feel, how you're lying on the floor. So we have to release tension. We have to take time to be here. We have to, we don't have to, we just are. And that's also why I don't teach in a hype manner. I don't jump around, I don't make, make big gestures. I, we need this quiet time. It's a kind of quiet time, a meditation kind of time, just to be on the floor and to be. And there's nothing what we must do or have to fulfill. If we can lie comfortably on the floor, it's already quite something. And you don't have to do anything except please bend your right knee. So there's several ways to do it. But bend your right knee and catch your right knee with both, your, both of your hands or one hand, however you want to do it, until you have your right knee in your hands. And the right knee is somewhat over your belly. If that's possible, <laughs> I too, I like to eat. Of course, I only eat plants. I don't eat animals. But even if you eat a lot of broccoli and <laughs> rice and potatoes, the, the belly tends to grow if you overdo it. Anyways, you have your right knee, right? Start pulling your right knee a little bit closer towards your chest and then let go again. And make it an easy movement, a small movement and, and see if the knee is too close to the midline, it won't work that well and if it's too far outside, you can hold it with one hand or two hands, it really doesn't matter. There's a second thing you, I want you to do is to flex your foot to bring your toes closer to your shin, to your lower leg, to flex your foot so that the, the toes come closer to your knee and your heel is going further away. It's flexing the foot, it's dorsiflexion. And do these two movements together. Flex your foot and bring your knee closer to your chest 
and then let it go again a little bit and start to make repeat this movement with little breaks. It's, it's not a back and forth, back and forth, it's like a machine, like a motorcycle. But it's one movement and then you stop it and return to the... Do we have to let go of the foot? Or flex the foot more and then flex it less? Maybe like the knee, flex the foot more and flex it less and start to get busy with this movement. Don't tilt your pelvis, don't do the things you don't need to do, but bring your knee closer to your chest and flex your foot and your heel is going towards your buttocks on the right side. Don't, don't lift your toes to the ceiling like this. No. Just Bring your knee closer towards your chest and flex your foot and then let go again. Flex your foot, bring the knee closer to the chest. And there's many things you can watch out for, feel out for, sense out for, mostly regarding your hip joints. Is your right hip joint closer to the floor than your left one? Is your right shoulder blade actually closer to the floor than your left shoulder blade? How are you lying on the floor? With which parts that is? And can you find symmetries or asymmetries in your body? And then let go of your knee, elongate your knee, stretch out your right leg again, so you're lying on the floor again. And can you feel anything, sense, any asymmetries, that you're lying on your right hip joint, you're on your right um, buttocks, different than on your left? Are there differences? Could be, could be. Now, take hold of your left knee, <laughs> Feels like a different knee. It is a different knee. And do the same thing. Bring your left knee closer to your chest while you flex your left foot. Dorsiflexion. And your toes. And then let go again. And this is not, this is not stretching. This is, we try to organize movement. We try to make movement better. We try to learn something about movement. We try to uncover secrets that are hidden in our nervous system. Old reflexes, old learning patterns. Go back to the time we have been like babies, very young. As a baby, we only did this the whole day. You too. The whole day you were busy with movement until you had to get up and do something for other people or for yourself. Uh -huh. Now, shall I already start to talk about this? Maybe I will. You do this movement. Now, uh, one more minute. And then let go again. Elongate your left leg. And now see, is it symmetrical or not? Right side the same as the left side? Mm -hmm. Do you lie in a curve or do you lie straight? Let me remind you of the five lines. Right arm, your right arm is like a line. It has a trajectory, but your right arm isn't doing anything now. So <laughs> not much we could observe except the how is it resting. In, for this we could observe a lot. But then there's the left arm, there's the right leg, and there's the left leg. And we have the midline, the spine, is our fifth line. So please draw up both of your knees, get hold of both of your knees, and do the same movement. Bring your knees closer towards your chest, and at the same time flex your feet. 
right? So, and if you think of your, if you just think of your muscles and uh, contractions, then you lose a lot of this lesson. There's a lot more to this lesson than just a physical exertion. Don't hold your knees together like a, a very sweet girl sitting on a park bench. Hold your knees as if you would like to pull them towards your chest and flex your feet and let go again a little bit and then do it again. Think of your spine. Your spine should be straight. Let your spine be long. And this is the fifth line. The columna vertebrale, vertebrale, columna, column. How, how to say it in the Italian language? I don't even know. La, la, L? I don't know. The spine. Let your spine be long. Let it be long. Think of your sit bones in a way. Yes, the sit bones. And let your spine be long when you do this movement. And then take a rest. And now feel how you're feeling on the floor. So this was three simple movements. Now bring your right arm up like this, up into relation to yourself, not in relation of the room. So up means lie, put your right arm long onto the floor, like I am doing now. Like you would, uh, if you have a question, you would raise your arm. But you're lying, so raising your arm is like this. And start to rise the, raise the arm higher. Raise the arm higher and higher, and then let go again. Raise the arm up, 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 as far as you can go, and then let go again. And so you can think of the line of the arm. Trajectory. Where is your arm going? Up, 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 up. So think of your right shoulder blade. Don't think of your right hand. Think of your right shoulder blade. And the left arm, have your left arm down. Point with the left arm down, downwards. Hmm? While you point with your right arm up, your right shoulder blade should go up, your left shoulder blade should go down. Do this movement a couple of times. Give yourself a little massage, a back rub, rub with your shoulder blades. After all this time I spent in Italy, I forgot how to say spinal column in Italian language. I'm very sorry. I should study a bit. Now, what is your head doing? Let your head go to the left, of course. But keep your nose towards the ceiling. Your nose and your eyes towards the ceiling. Oriented, the tip of your nose towards the ceiling. You reach with your right hand with your right shoulder blade actually, you reach up with your left shoulder blade down and let your head slide to the left. But keep, keep your head towards, your face towards the ceiling, if you have a ceiling. Don't turn your head, don't turn the head to the camera like I'm doing, or away from the camera, but keep your head, so it's a side bending, your left ear is coming closer to your left shoulder. This is really a massage with your shoulder blades on the floor. And don't be feeble, don't be too small about it. You can make it bigger, you can make it a big side bending movement. A big side bending movement.
see how far you can go. You can go a lot further than you would think you can go. A real side bending. Whoa. Right shoulder blade goes up, left shoulder blade goes up. But don't hurt yourself. Don't overdo it. Don't hurt yourself. Just, it might be easy to go further. And then come back to the center and take a short rest. I'm very not symmetrical anymore. <laughs> I think the floor has changed, it's not even anymore. Then bring your left arm up. So you have a left line, the line with your left arm. Push the line upwards and your right arm, push the right arm downwards. And it's, you think of two lines that are pushing. Think of your shoulder blades that are moving on the floor. And at some point, you have to move your head. The head has to participate in this movement. Do you feel any difference? For me, the left arm is different here. The right arm was easier to go up. And see how far, how far of a side bending can you do on this side? Think of your spine as a rod, as a soft stick that goes, that can bend like a bamboo, a young bamboo stick. And think of the lines of your arms. The right arm is going down, the line of the left arm is going up, 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 and then you still have the feet. The legs, not the feet, the legs. You have five lines in the body. Yes, and then take a break and see how that feels like now to lie on the floor. Where you lie, how your shoulder blades, are your shoulder blades, do you feel your shoulder blades? Or do you feel the lower ribs, your ribs, your chest? How is your pelvis lying, your legs? How is the feeling of lying? Bend both of your knees and get your feet to standing and see how that feels like. How what kind of image you have of your spine. How's the feeling of lying on the floor now after these couple of movements? And then elongate your legs again. Make your legs long and think of your five lines, your arms, your legs, and your spinal column. Now, get hold of your right knee again, like we already did before. Start to pull your right knee towards your chest and flex your foot just like we did. See how it is now, it's quite different, could be quite different. For me it's quite different, even this is like the fourth time I did this lesson in a week, but I still feel the difference. You can feel it in your hip joint. Think of your line, of your spine is long. Now, your left leg, straighten your left leg downwards and push with your left heel downwards. Uh, like a Bruce Lee kick in the air. <laughs> Make your left leg long. Pull up your toes. Now at the same time, push up, uh, pull up your right knee. Pull up your right knee, flex your right foot while you push down your left foot your left leg, think of the line of the leg.
just draw up your right knee. Draw up your right knee and flex your right foot. This is always the same movement. Then push down with your left foot. Have an image of your hip joints in your mind. Have an image of your long spine in your mind. Have an image, where are your sit bones? Where are your shoulder blades? Do both movements together. Pull up your right knee and push down your left foot, your left leg, your left line. Be long with your spine. It's not a contortion, but just let it be long. And then let go again. <sighs> Make your legs long again. Just rest. There's an... Um, you just feel how you're lying now. How are, how, what kind of sensations you have after this movement. And the, now there's an image I want to give you. Think of your sit bones. I talked about it in the last video. If you haven't seen the last video, it's a short five minute video where I show a skeleton, a computer skeleton, about the sit bones, where they are, and the skeleton sitting. So imagine your own skeleton, your chest and your spine, and on top is your head, and then you have the pelvis with the sit bones. There, there are somewhere are your sit bones, even with your legs straight. Maybe you can think of you're sitting on a bicycle, right? You have a saddle. Imagine you're sitting on a bicycle, just on the last part of the bicycle. Or have to, like, it's like two tennis balls, a bicycle seat with two tennis balls. And the bicycle is pushing the seat, the saddle, upwards. So you can feel the saddle against your hip, against your sit bones. Like the bicycle is pushing against your sit bones and it pushes, of course, through the skeleton. It pushes your spine long. Just have this feeling of being long with your spine. A long spine because your bicycle seat is pushing against your sit bones. Yeah, is this a good image? It's long. Okay, then get hold of your left knee. Get your left knee with both of your hands or just one hand as you like. Bring your left knee closer towards your chest and flex your left foot. And let go again and do it again. Do this a couple of times in your own pace, in your own, as far as you want to go. <clears throat> your left knee closer to your chest or closer to your left armpit, also possible. Flex your left foot and let go again. Do this a couple of times. It's uh, maybe it's a stretching, but we not focus on the stretching. We focus on the movement, number one. But number two, even more important, we focus on the lines of the body, of the long spine. The spine is long when you do this. Let the spine be long. Don't flex it. If when you flex your spine, it's not long anymore. Try to find the longest possible spine. And now think of your right foot, your right long leg. Push down with your right foot. Push your right foot, your right foot down, your heel. Push your right heel down. Flex up, dorsiflexion also in your right leg. Like the karate jump from Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan. Who else? <laughs> and then pull up your left knee while you push down with your right foot. Two movements and think of your long spine. Yes, yes, yes. And then take a break. Elongate your legs and just feel how are your hip joints now on the floor? How are your shoulder blades on the floor? How is your resting on the floor? Oh, what do you feel? I feel very flat. I feel like a shellfish. I feel like I am melted into the floor. How is it for you? You can leave a comment. 
leave a comment with your experiences in this lesson. Then flex your knees again and bring your feet to standing. And just feel like, how, how is it with your feet standing now? How is your feeling for the hip joint? How is your feeling for your spine, for how you lie on the floor? Draw up both knees, get hold of both of your knees, bring them closer to your chest, flex the feet at the same time. We did this already. Just bring your knees closer to your chest and flex your feet. And see how is it. Then elongate your legs again. <sighs> Make your legs long. Take a short break. Then pull up your right knee. Take hold of your right knee. And your left arm, bring, bring your left arm up again, like we did before. So, this is our starting position. The left leg is long, the right leg is flexed, you have your right knee in your hands, and the left arm is up. So obviously you're holding your right knee with your right hand. Or you have three or four hands. Then you can hold it with more hands than one. All right, then. <laughs> Pull up your right knee towards your chest or your right armpit. Flex your right foot. Let go again. Yes. Movement number one. Movement number two. Push your left foot downwards. Make your left leg long. We already did this. Number three, elongate your left arm up. Left arm up, 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 up. And your spine is long. So, these are three movements. Pulling the knee, pushing the foot, and pushing the arm with your left shoulder blade. You can go into a curve if you want like we did before, but think of being long. Don't, no, don't curve. Just try to be long. Imagine you're standing. Mm. This is like power standing. You're standing on the floor with your left foot. You pull up your right knee and you elongate your left arm. Yeah? Take a tiny break. Tiny break. Now, get hold of your right knee with your left arm. Right knee, left arm, same situation. Right knee, hold your right knee with your left arm. Your left leg, leg is long again, and put your right arm up. So actually, we just changed arms. And start with the movements again. Pull your right knee towards your chest. Push your left leg downwards. And push your right arm upwards. So there's a diagonal from your right arm to your left leg. You can push in opposite directions or same directions. Explore this situation for yourself. You pull, not constantly, but you pull your right knee towards your chest. You let go again, you pull, you let go again, you pull, you let go again, or you hold a bit. Don't forget your right foot, the right foot has to flex, the right arm has to go up, the left foot has to go down. There's many things, it's complicated matters. Yes, and think of your sit bones. Think of something pushing against your sit bones and your spine becoming long. Your spine becoming long while you do all these movements these explorations in this situation. And let go again. Let go of everything. Just take a rest. How do you rest? What do you feel? What do you sense? 
what comes to your mind? How are your shoulder blades lying, your chest, your legs, your hip bones, your arms, your spine? Now we need to do this with the left leg. Bring up your left knee, get hold of your left knee. So your left knee is flexed, your right leg is long. Bring up your right arm. Start to pull your left knee closer to your chest or to your left armpit. <clears throat> Flex your left foot. Let go again. It's a movement in the hip joint actually, with the upper leg bone in the hip joint. <clears throat> At the same time, push down with your right foot. Make your right leg long. Or you can alternate if you want. Explore these two movements. And then the third component is the right arm is a line that the right arm goes up. So you can think of a line which goes from your right foot up to your right hand. And pulling your left knee towards your chest, obviously. Think of your sits bones also and of your long spine. But don't hold your breath, of course. Just let everything flow. Explore this situation. The, the meaning is this. Take, take, a, take a short break. We're doing this to explore standing, how we organize the hip joints and the pelvis and the spines and the legs for standing. Get hold of your left knee with your right hand and the left arm up. Same thing, we just change over the hands. So you pull your left knee towards your chest. It's continue the left knee to the chest. It's the right leg that goes down, right? It's not a side bending. You stand your leg in a way, as if there would be a floor, but there is no floor. So it just looks like a kick. And your left arm goes up. So this is a diagonal between your left arm and your right leg. Feel inside, we are enhancing this self-image of diagonals inside the body. What kind of image, what kind of imagination do we have of this movement? Where are our parts, <laughs> the two legs, two arms, the head, the spine, the pelvis, the sits bones, the, the hip joints, where is everything? How does everything play together? How can, it, can we let it organize? And then let go again. So this was our last movement. <clears throat> let go again. Just rest and feel how you're lying now on the floor. What kind of sensations do you have? from this learning experience, from movement experiment. Bend both of your knees so that your feet are standing. <laughs> How that feels like. What kind of image you have from your pelvis, from your hip joints. Huh? How does it feel like? Is, something, is this familiar or is something new? And pull your knees towards your chest and flex your feet at the same time, just a little bit, and see how, how this feels now after this lesson, how this developed, how this changed, enhanced. All right, so then next step is to roll over one side and come to standing and check how it feels like in standing. What is your feeling in standing? For the hip joints, for your balance, how you carry your head, how long is your spine? And I will leave you here. 
you can try this lesson again. I recommend it to do it again, maybe tomorrow in a couple of days to see how it changes over time. You can, you can learn, you can try again. And if you like the video, like the video and uh, leave a comment. I would be happy for comments and see you in the next video.